South Africa's proposed expenditure for the next year is $120 billion, but projected revenue is expected at $108 billion. With government debt now at almost 51% of GDP at $169 billion, servicing debt is taking up most of the budget. Spending is to be reduced by $2 billion over the next two years. We will continue to safeguard expenditure that protects poor households. It is only right that if households and firms face tough choices in balancing their income and expenses, the same disciplines must be applied in public expenditure as well. In other words, that which we expect the public to do, we in government must also do. Revenue collection this year declined by $2.3 billion. The minister did warn last year of higher taxes to plug the gap. The rich will pay more on income, while all South Africans will pay more for fuel, tobacco and alcohol. Further consultations are currently taking place on the other matter that concerns some of you, on the tax on sugary beverages. Arising from these discussions and working closely with the Department of Health, the proposed design has been revised to include both what are called intrinsic and added sugars. The tax will be implemented later this year once details are finalized and the legislation is passed by yourselves. A new carbon tax will also be announced later this year and in line with the government's policy of social spending, the minister announced further increases to assist the poor and vulnerable. Given the magnitude of student funding requirements, it is imperative that we find consensus on a clear roadmap towards a better higher education and training system and a roadmap we're going to need for the next five to ten years. It will clearly indicate how society will achieve access, opportunity, financing and support for students in the university and further education sectors. The finance minister did his best to protect the poor, although some taxes were inevitable. There's also going to be the pending taxes on sugar and carbon emissions that's to be implemented later this year. But the minister worked hard to craft a budget without any political interference. Speculation is rife that a cabinet reshuffle will see the minister removed from his position. The minister said he serves the president and if he is removed, so be it. But he warned that any more political instability won't be good for South Africa at this stage. Sumit Ranadu, CGTN, Cape Town, South Africa. Well, let's break down that budget speech further. Angelo Coppola now joins us in Johannesburg. Angelo, as always, welcome to the show. Now, one message was clear today in the finance minister's budget speech. It's tough times ahead for the South African economy, and certainly tough choices will have to be made. Now, give us some of those highlights uh, from today's budget speech. Which, uh, let's rather not call them highlights, let's call them lowlights. There wasn't any good news. It's the biggest budget in the country's history at $77 billion. The issue really is that some 13 cents on every single rand is going to be spent servicing the country's debt, which, as Sumitra put it, at 50.7% of GDP. So that's a huge number. The bad news for the 125,000 wealthiest people in the country is that the marginal tax rate goes up from 41% to 45 percent, making it possibly the highest tax rate for an individual in the world. Personal income tax increases are across the board, as Sumitra mentioned, except for the very poor. There's a fuel tax, which has been increased substantially, and that's going to increase the cost of doing business in South Africa. The minister was also at pains to point out that VAT still remains on the table. It's being researched at the moment, and he did indicate that if they are going to do anything with the with VAT, they'll do it slowly. They don't want to put a big hit onto consumers in the country at the moment. Mm. Gordon says he's got to be very careful how he does this. Sin taxes are up, as you have heard, by more than 10%, which is not very good news. The poor are being protected. And some $60 billion is going to be spent on those social services. So it's not a good budget for taxpaying people on the street, which here. Mm. Well, Angela, we know the ratings agencies were certainly watching this uh, budget speech closely. They have shown concern in the past uh, about South Africa's slow growth and, of course, bulging public sector wage bill. Did he ease some of those worries today? Well, 
the bottom line here is that the ratings agencies wanted to hear more about cost cutting and about the bloated uh, public sector and about how costs are going to be saved there. They probably won't be happy. They'll have wanted the minister to do more in terms of cutting those costs. But according to economists, the bottom line is that there is no program. There's no, there's lots of rhetoric in fact, but there's no actual physical program. Even the minister is talking uh, up the budget and the rhetoric around looking after the environment um, and that social injustices have to be balanced and that the economy and the gap between the rich and the poor has to be narrowed. But no structural reform was announced and that's something the agencies were looking for. There's no plan of action. Mm -hmm. The only plan of action we heard was taxpayers are going to need to take a big picture look and they're probably going to have to pay their taxes and get on with it. And that's the bottom line there, which you? Mm -hmm. Well, Angelo, have there been any objections to some of Gordon's uh, decisions in that budget? He suddenly announced that there were some hard-hitting increases in taxes, like we talked about. Will we see Parliament possibly making some changes going forward? Well, the budget process is an inclusionary one. Uh, in other words, the whole of these, um, the government, the cabinet sits down and looks at all the, the data, looks at all the figures, and looks at, and approves all the all the numbers and the tax increases. So that's done in advance. Of course, when you go to parliament, the parliament is basically the majority run by the ANC. So any objections that will be raised by the opposition are going to be objections in, uh, on paper only because when it comes to voting time, the ANC majority will have it and there's no question that the entire budget will be accepted and approved once the debate process is finished. Right. Well, many thanks, Angelo, for those insights. Angelo Coppola joining us there in Johannesburg. Now,